I'm working on making an apocalyptic survival game, and to make players think about which items they should farm, I want to make a grid inventory system like Escape from Tarkov or Dredge. Today, I'm going to talk about how I made this grid inventory from nothing. First, I opened up my game design documents and wrote down all the inventory functionalities that needed to be in my system, like how the player interacts with props and loots items from them. Basically, players have a default size inventory, but they can increase its size by wearing storage items like backpacks. And like in Tarkov, I thought it'd be great if there is a nested inventory system like boxes or something. After finishing this up, I started drawing inventory UIs as I imagined. Most of the time, I referenced Escape from Tarkov and Dredge. And finally, I decided on these dark blue colors as the main color. I think it looks good with the game. Then I took some time thinking about how to make item images that were going to be used in the inventory. At first, I thought I was gonna draw images by myself one by one, but I didn't feel confident in my ability to create images that would match the game's atmosphere. Both in terms of quality and style, it felt overwhelming. I was so frustrated, realizing that no matter how well I made the inventory system, it would all be useless if I couldn't make the quality images. After staring into space for a moment, an idea flashed into my head. It might seem obvious to you, but I couldn't think of it that way. The way I thought was, well, I could make item images by rendering 3D models made in Blender. This approach would not only save time but also guarantee quality, which I mean the items would look exactly the same as in the game at least. After creating the item images in this way and placing them in my inventory UI, well, I was actually pretty happy with how it looked. So I finished making inventory assets and it was time to code. But honestly, I had no idea where to start or how to approach this at first. Feeling a bit stuck, I searched YouTube and thanks to the code monkey god, I could get his grid inventory tutorial source code and that helped me build the foundation for my inventory system. After taking several scripts and modifying them to my taste, I created a test scene to verify the code was working as I expected. While it took some time to understand the code structure, I succeeded in making this basic grid and drop with my assets on it. A grid drag and drop basically works like this. When an item is dropped with the mouse, we convert its word position to grid indices of the target inventory. Then, we check if the item can be placed there by considering the index and item size. If it's possible, we fill that grid space with the item's information. At this point, the code structure looked like this. We have the grid inventory engine, grid inventory items, and these are the core things that implement grid drag and drop. And this grid inventory display handles all the UI related features that we see on the screen. After making this fundamental grid drag and drop, I completely understand how this grid inventory system should be made and how to add functionalities we wrote down before. Now, I felt more confident about this. First, I started moving everything like game objects from the test scene to the main scene. And of course, there were lots of bugs and script modifications and game object structure changes for better maintenance during this process. These are too tedious so I will skip those details in this video. And finally, I managed to get the basic inventory working in the main scene. I was so excited when I simply moved this tiny bottle of painkillers around. But you know, this is actually just the beginning. None of the inventory features I planned have been implemented yet. And yes, it's time to tackle them one by one. I started with the looting related inventory work. Players need to be able to farm items from props, which means props might need their own inventories. There could be various implementations for this function. For example, while we could use a single inventory and just change its size and state for all props, we could make an inventory for each prop. I chose the latter since I thought it would be much simpler. Maybe there could be performance or memory issues, but I think it's not too late to fix those problems when they actually happen. So I added a grid inventory manager to handle multiple inventories. Since each prop has its own inventory, when items are taken, they will remain gone when you check the prop again. Next, we should make a storage inventory like bags or backpacks. Players can have only one bag at a time, and if they try to get a new one, 
it replaces the older one. Since these storage-like items are special, I created a storage inventory item script that inherits from grid inventory item and storage inventory display scripts for its display. These and grid inventory manager scripts handle initializing items inside the storage and ensuring players can have only one bag at a time. And right-clicking a bag opens another inventory showing its contents. This floating inventory can be dragged around like a window. Since this is also another special type of inventory, I created a floating inventory display script to handle these features. And you should know that. I'm talking like I just added scripts and magical things happen, but actually there was a lot of effort to make these features work correctly. I ran into a lot of bugs and it took quite some time to fix them all. But I managed to make it work. Lastly, I added some UX improvement features. This might seem obvious to you, but at that moment, these obvious features didn't even exist. Things like automatically moving items into a bag when you drag them over it, or having items automatically move into the player's inventory when you right-click them. Looking back, after fixing all these bugs, I was pretty happy with how the inventory system worked. There's probably more detailed work I could add, but I will do that after playtesting. I can spend forever working on just this inventory system. So this is it. This is how I create my grid inventory system from nothing. One thing I learned is the importance of building a solid foundation. Once I had the grid drag and drop system, most of the development was just expanding on that core functionality. If you enjoy watching this video, please subscribe to this channel. I will keep working on this project and I will share even more interesting devlogs next time. Bye!